140. Alternative services are a very high risk um, area in terms of um, deliveries etc. So I think there has to be a real focus around safety, around quality. The women and children's um, division was one of those departments that did give me some cause for concern. I think our organisational culture was quite uh, incoherent and there was a lot of discordance. Our complaints were average, we didn't have um, a greater number of incidents, um, but I'd, I wasn't ever convinced that the, the governance uh, frameworks were, were in place and were robust. The biggest issues we had were, were clinical issues, low cord pH, relatively high rates of postpartum haemorrhage, difficulties in interpreting CCGs, and we seem to have these difficulties that were carrying on. Once we actually became part of the project, we began to realise that these were actually symptomatic of other difficulties within the unit. I think the biggest eureka moment when they actually joined the King's Fund team was realising that it wasn't about outputs. It was actually more to do with the human behavioural elements of it, the culture um, and getting the individuals involved. When there's an emergency, we're all very focused, we all know what we need to do, but the other 90% of the time and um, we've all got conflicting priorities. The project was really about attacking that 90% of the time and, and trying to ensure that as a result of working together better, we had less emergencies. I think what the King's Fund has helped um, the team to do is, is to take a collective responsibility. What happened during the time of the project was that there was a greater cohesion and a greater coherence. It was very much a multidisciplinary project. And so things were built from the ground up by the different members of the team. For me, it's the first time that doing something multidisciplinary has actually worked really well because um, everybody took their own area of responsibility, but we all bounced off each other. And there was definitely a synergy and a momentum gained through working with each other. Previously, the governance framework was, was just a process. Um, it was a process that was um, owned and delivered by one or two individuals. What was often happening is that a decision would be made, it wouldn't be communicated or it wouldn't be implemented, there'd be no traction, and we'd have our weekly rolling our eyes, why wasn't that done meeting? <laughs> we do have a governance uh, and risk manager and the, we did have a reporting system in place. It was encouraged um, and the midwives and the staff did report but I think um, what we've changed very recently and on the back of our working closer together as a team is we've put up uh, some group working where we review those incidents uh, more timely but multidisciplinary as a group. I think what we've got now is a very different um, governance approach and arrangement where everybody um, in the maternity unit actually owns it. The buddy system was definitely a success for us in, as far as safer births go. Prior to us doing this, we'd, we'd had some serious incidents following CCG mis misinterpretations. Um, and what we thought would be, it would be a good idea for a second pair of eyes to check the CTG every hour. It did work on some shifts, it didn't work on others. The cons first consultants today with the coordinators, it became pretty obvious from discussions with them that they didn't really understand how the system was supposed to be working. The coordinators got together and, and just came up with a, a protocol really for it, how best to use it, redesigned the stickers and then put them back out. It's gone from being an ad hoc feature which we thought would improve patient safety to something that's become habit and part, part of the culture and that, that everybody accepts now. An illustration of this would be the birth rate acuity tool, which has to be filled in every two hours. Now we can make it as easy as possible for it to be done, but to go to a computer and fill it in every two hours, it, its greatest use for us is when things get busy, which is when it's going to be the greatest resistance to sit in front of a computer and put some, some information in, of course. So again, it, after about three months, we found that 90% of the time it was being filled in. And I think people were taking it on board. We have an example where putting forward a business case for additional anaesthetist cover, uh, for additional midwives. We've been able to use the acuity tool specifically on labour ward 
to look at the percentage of time that we're in negative acuity. And I think that's given us the, the evidence that we need to present business cases forward to the executive committee. I think what a crucial thing for us was for people to understand that these things weren't for our benefit, but for their benefit. I think the MAPSAP, Manchester Patient Safety Framework, um, you know, that was one of the key things for us as well because those workshops were very well attended from staff at, at all tiers, from consultants to healthcare assistants, and it gave people a chance to really voice their concerns. The MAPSAF workshop, what that's done is allow some staff, greater staff engagement um, that's been facilitated by PAM in terms of getting a redesign of the ward with both a midwifery led unit which is, uh, is new for us here at Leighton um, as well as an induction suite downstairs, triage absolutely central to Labour Ward. This design has been supported by staff involvement. The ideas that came out of the first one like forming a triage area for patients um, and like you know potentially an induction suite again th those were taken on board and, and we've enacted those and, and I think people have, have realized that, that their voice is important. So all the work that they've done for the last 18 months two years is culminated into the new uh, service redesign and the staffing review that we're just doing this year. Resistance to change diminished in some respects because people began to understand that, that we were, we're trying to drive things forward and we we're trying to involve them. It's been an absolute pleasure to see the people who have been involved with it grow, um, gain confidence and actually belief um, in themselves that they can do this uh, and that they can take it forward. When you're actually changing and, and, and bringing all these things in, there's always a buzz of interest at the start. But really what you're interested in is six months down the line as to whether or not things are still being done. And, and I think it's only by having everybody looking the same way, working together, that that actually happens.